Hello, welcome back to the Cricket Nerds. It's just me today. Um, I think Benji and Zach have fainted after seeing the latest match, which was KKR versus Sunrisers. But uh, we are back again. I am back again to talk about the second day of the IPL, which had two matches in it, Punjab Kings versus Delhi Capitals and Kolkata Knight Riders versus Sunrisers Hyderabad. Two really good games, actually. Um, and I'm just going to, yeah, kind of ramble a little bit. I'll talk about who impressed, who didn't, heroes and villains, and any sort of takeaways from there. Um, if you are only interested in watching or uh, looking at a review of one of the matches, click uh, the the timestamps will be in the description or it should come up if you scrub along on the bottom of this video. So you, you can just skip to KKR versus Sunrisers Hyderabad if you want to. But the first one I want to look at is Punjab versus DC. Now, if you're a long-time fan of the show, you will know that I am a Punjab Kings fan. So, naturally, I was delighted to see that Punjab managed to get the win. I wasn't overly impressed with how Punjab played, though, um, which I'm going to say is actually a really big positive on the fact that they won because it, it wasn't looking good and then it was, and then it wasn't, and then it was. <laughs> and I'll explain what I mean by that. So things started off very shakily. First sort of three overs um, looked, yeah, pr pretty dodgy. Um, it, I think it was 39, 39 was uh, where the first wicket was lost. And that was after only 3.2 overs. So the first three overs were pretty shocking from Sam Curran, Arshdeep Singh and Kagisa Rabada. But... Arshdeep Singh gets the breakthrough, uh, takes the wicket of Mitchell Marsh. And from there, things get slightly better. And one thing that really impressed him from Punjab's side was regular wickets. They managed to constantly take wickets. Um, so even though Delhi's batsmen, at least sort of the top four, got starts, they couldn't push on from there. And that was super, super important. It was something that um, they lacked last season was being able to take regular wickets at, at those intervals that they needed to. So that is obviously a massive, massive plus. Um, Delhi Capitals, I just want to talk about their batting for a little bit because, first of all, it was really interesting to see the overseas that they picked. David Warner, Mitchell Marsh, Tristan Stubbs and Shy Hope. All of them are batters. Um, Mitch Marsh, he can bowl a little bit of medium pace, but primarily he's a batsman, I'd say. I think he's a he's a batting all-rounder. So all four overseas players for Delhi's side are batsmen, which might be a little indication that perhaps they've got their squad build up a little bit wrong, because if they're having to bolster the, only their batting with overseas... And their bowling isn't super strong. It shows that there are weaknesses in that squad depth. They don't quite trust the batting that they've got. One notable omission for me was seeing Prithvi Shaw sidelined. Now, I, I, he's had a real fall from grace. He he looked like the next big thing in Indian cricket. And I still think he is a very, very talented player. So to not even play him um, and to, to just go for a top three of completely overseas players really was a testament to how little Delhi trust their overseas, uh, their Indian talent, at least in that top order. Um, Rishabh Pant coming back, lovely to see. It was, you know, heartwarming. Um, and obviously from a Punjab fan, I was glad that he got out kind of early, but he still looked quite good. And there is reason to be optimistic if you are a Delhi fan. Um, the main story for the batting though, was absolutely Abhishek Perel, who came in at, uh, I think he came in at nine, obviously as a, uh, he was at eight or nine. Um, he, he was obviously the impact sub because things were going horribly, horribly wrong for Delhi. Like I say, regular wickets made a massive, massive impact. But Abhishek Perel, 32 off 10, on a track that everybody else made look um, not quite as easy as I think it was. Like it was actually quite a decent track. I think it was probably a one, 
90, 185, 190 wicket. Um, and Abhishek Perel, he was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Carrying on his form from the side, Mushtakali Trophy, really nice to see. And yeah, he's, he's, I think at this point, he's earned his place in the starting 11 of Delhi. So that's great to see. Um, bowlers wise, again, we're seeing this impact of having two bouncers in the over really helping out. Arshdeep Singh in particular was uh, really good because he used the normal length ball as well, back of a length ball, but also bouncers. Yorkers weren't used quite as much as I think they should have been um, because I'd say that Arshdeep Singh, Kagisa Rabada and Sam Curran all have the ability to bowl a decent Yorker and Harsha Patel, to be honest. Um, but one thing I did notice was Punjab's squad makeup, which in you know quite stark contrast of, uh, of Delhi Capitals, they had Johnny Bairstow in the top, Sam Curran in at four, Liam Livingston in at six, and then Kiyusa Rabada carded at about 10. So straight away, you've got a, a really stark contrast because Punjab have got all of their top order spread out, or sorry, all of their overseas spread out, uh, whereas Delhi have got theirs top loaded, really. Um, I'll just talk about Punjab Kings's, uh, in fact, I want to touch one more on, on the bowling, which is Harpreet Bra. Really, really impressed me. So yes, um, Sam Curran wasn't great. Seamers in general weren't super, but they were pretty decent. Arshdeep Singh, I was very impressed with. But the ability to, first of all, have play like six frontline bowling options was really good because Sam Curran, as I'll get on to, played really well at number four. So he's he's obviously like a legit option with the bowling, but he didn't need to because he had a terrible first over. So like, you know what, we don't need you now. Uh, Harpreet Bra bowled excellently. Harsha Patel, though, had three really good overs and then the wheels absolutely came off and he was taken apart in that last over uh, by Abhishek Perel. So then Punjab's bowling, uh, sorry, batting, Shikha Darwin, nice aggressive start. You love to see it. Johnny Bairstow, nice aggressive start. Very unluckily run out, though. Uh, the non-striker's end, Ishant Sharma getting a little tip onto the stumps. So that that's the kind of bad luck that just happens from time to time. Perhaps Imran Singh, aggressive. I like it. Sam Curran actually played a, lot, a little bit of an anchor's role. And it, I liked it. I, I think it suited him. He's got that ability to... Uh, hit from ball one if he needs to. He's not the most accomplished ball striker and there's no illusions on him being like, you know, the next big batsman in English cricket or world cricket. But his ability to build an innings like he did just there was really, really useful. And I I think it just de deepens Punjab's batting, um, not using him as exclusively uh, a finisher, but actually letting him build a little bit of an innings I think it was a, a really good idea. Jitter Sharma didn't look great. Liam Livingston looked good. And that was something I was really quite worried about because SA20, um, even before then, he'd looked pretty shocking. Like, uh, so it was the SA20, there was the uh, t the 50 over World Cup, all of which Liam Livingston looked completely out of form and terrible. So big positives for Punjab there. But it wasn't perfect. Nearly bowled it at the end with um, Khalil Ahmed taking two wickets consecutively with Sam Curran and then Shashank Singh going. And that was obviously really quite... Uh, things could have swung in in the direction of Delhi Capitals at that point. It was obviously still Punjab's game to lose, but any Punjab fan will tell you we've we've won from... From strong, we've lost from stronger positions. Uh, we have this ability to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory sometimes. Pick of the bowlers, though, was absolutely Kuldeep Yadav. I would have expected that. I would have called that at the start of the game. Um, Kuldeep and Aksar Patel are both outstanding spinners. I reckon it's probably the best spin duo in the IPL. And they didn't disappoint at all. Really tied up those middle overs and... If Delhi can sort out the rest of their team, they've they've really uh, they've, they've got some gems in there. 
Abhishek Perel, Axel Patel, Kuldeep Yadav, all really strong looking. I think Ishant Sharma actually bowled pretty nicely. Um, it was dropped catches. That was obviously the, the main problem with Delhi. Uh, I know there's an absolute howler from David Warner. Tristan Stubbs spilled a pretty simple chance. So catches win matches or as uh, as I know Zach said before, it's actually more accurately described as dropped catches lose matches. So very significant there. And uh, we, we I, uh, I've been told by one of our members, look who's watching, um, he said, somebody wrote on Twitter that every team should give two points to Punjab Kings, honouring the beauty of Pretty Zinter. Uh, and he could just imagine me saying, you dog, in uh, in response. And yeah, that person, whoever wrote that, is an absolute dog. So uh, there we go. That is Punjab versus Delhi summed up. Now I'm going to move on to certainly a more exciting game, um, even though I was a completely neutral fan on this one. I think it was absolutely outstanding. KKR versus Sunrisers Hyderabad. Wow. Wow. What a game. Um, what what a brilliant start to the IPL, effectively, because it's only the third match in. But KKR, they open with Sultan Narayan, and that's something I want to talk about, because I do not understand, like, so many times people have opened with Sunil Narayan, and... It maybe worked like, I don't know, five years ago when pinch hitters were like a more accepted thing and just like a bit of a novelty. It kind of worked occasionally, but I don't know. It's it's not worked for a very long time. And I've seen I've seen Sun on the Rhine fail at the top of the order far more often than I've seen him succeed. And today was no exception. He ran himself out after getting two or four. Um, Phil Salt, on the other hand, actually looked pretty good. He, he carried on being aggressive, and that was the big key for KKR. Lost a lot of early wickets, but kept on being aggressive. And their sort of finishing th finishing trio were brilliant. Ramadeep Singh, uh, a, a Punjabi, so a bit of a legend. Uh, he scored 35 off 17, four sixes in that, which was brilliant like super super useful cameo rinku singh 23 or 15 not bad you know a, another handy cameo in a situation where they really just needed fast runs but the main story was andre russell 64 off 25 seven sixes i think six of those were over cow corner it was almost like a village look at a wagon wheel but it was really, really aggressive batting and exactly what KKR needed. We know that KKR have got a lot of reliance on their overseas talent. Phil Salt, Son and Ryan, Andre Russell, Mitchell Stark, they need those guys to really win them some games. And that's ultimately what we saw with Andre Russell's finishing. Um, looking at Sunrisers, now, we had no idea what 11 they were actually going to come out with. It, it was... Is such a difficult decision because they've got such good overseas players. Um, but Marco Janssen, Pat Cummins, uh, who else did they have? Aidan Markham and Heinrich Klaassen were who they settled on in the end. Whether that was the right decision, I'm not sure. It seemed like KKR did quite well with the spin, having Varun Chakravarti, Soya Sharma and Sunil Narine. That seemed like it worked quite well for them. And whether or not Hasaranga would have been quite useful, I'm, I'm not sure. But Marco Janssen, as it turned out, did not do very good things. Uh, he went at 13, over 13s and over. Bouvi didn't look good, over uh, 12s and over. Um, Shabazz Ahmed, useless with the ball. He only had you know one over, went for 14 runs. Um, so not great things there. Positives for Sunrisers was Natarajan looks pretty decent and Pat Cummins and Mike Markanda, I think he is actually a really handy uh, leg spinner. So pros and cons, a massive pro for Sunrisers is Heinrich Klaassen though, who nearly, nearly got Sunrisers over the line chasing that massive total of 209. He hit eight sixes, no fours, didn't bother with them, but it was a massive, massive ask. And... The, the asking rate went through the roof and 
Heinrich Klaassen and Shabazz Ahmed managed to build a really decent partnership and they, they nearly got over the line. I was actually quite impressed with the hitting of Shabazz Ahmed, but he got himself out at a really crucial time where they only needed, I think it was what, seven off the last over, something like that. It really wasn't much at all. And Shabazz Ahmed gets himself out instead of just rotating the strike back to Klaassen, who was obviously hitting out. And it was just terrible, terrible timing because then Marco Janssen hits a single and uh, Heinrich Klaassen, he feels like he needs to slash at it then because it's pressure. It's only five off two required. And he goes out uh, with a brilliant catch by Sir Sharma, I should add. And Pat Cummins absolutely whiffs at one and they lose. And it it actually should have been Sunrise's victory at the end. But testament to Harshit Rana's cool head. Um, he did give Mayan Kagawal a little bit of a send-off, which I know won't have won't have been the most popular thing in the world. But ultimately he did the job that he needed to do and got them over the line. So it was an awesome game. I I really, really enjoyed watching it. Uh, big hero of the game, Heinrich Larsen. Big hero of the game is obviously Andre Russell. A villain of the game, I'd say, was Mitchell Stark, who for that price tag can't really be going at 13 and over. It, that's just not acceptable. And um, yeah, another... I, someone that dragged it back into being a hero is obviously Son on the Rhine because even though he's not an opener and he should be nowhere near the top of the order, he's a brilliant bowler and he should be on that side every single time. So that's where I'm going to leave it. I hope you uh, hope you enjoyed. Sorry about just me and having to monologue, but there we go. Um, like I say, the other two are just uh, obviously two gobsmacked to be able to podcast today. So I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We're going to be pumping out a load of IPL content. So we do really appreciate all the support that we get. Um, if you want to get some exclusive content, then hop on to our membership. It's only, it, it's super cheap. Okay. It's really cheap, but it is the best way to help us out. Um, it supports the channel. And yeah. So if, if you want to support the channel, get some exclusive content, get badges and emojis and all that sort of stuff, then the link to being a member is in the description and yeah, we'll see you next time. Goodbye.